Hey there everyone, this is Mystic Fish and welcome to episode 24 of our Factorio series on designing an expandable base. Last episode we looked at our steam power and what I want to do this episode is to look at our module production. Now the module production is going to be uh, one of the first things that we upgrade when we have the opportunity to upgrade stuff and that's because this is eventually going to be the thing that is going to limit our ability to upgrade the base. It's how fast we can produce modules. So uh, fortunately, as we've done with some of the other ones, I have a very familiar single production column uh, set up here that gets all the way to tier three modules. So let's walk through it, uh, if we will. Uh, I guess we start with the factory planner here. And what I did was I tried to find, uh, if we're gonna do tier three modules, where, you know, what sort of the major bottleneck was. So I found that, you know, we can get actually nearly full belts of copper and iron in here. In particular, copper is pretty close to the 2700 uh, that we have. This is backed off a little bit uh, so that uh, we have a full belt of green circuits is sort of the, the main thing that's the bottleneck in this particular design. So we're gonna end up with a full belt of the green circuits. So let's, uh, let's start walking through this. <clears throat> and uh, as with all of our other designs, we're gonna start with the end state and then we will figure out how to scale this back as we go. Uh, as we have with some of our other designs, we do a lot of the oil processing related stuff up front. Uh, and so in particular, we do plastic uh, that lets us get our coal in here and then be done with it. So the, the coal comes in, uh, the plastic is put out on the other side of the belt, and then we filter the coal out here by filtering the plastic left, and then this belt ends. So that's the end of the coal. Uh, we do sulfur next, that lets us uh, be done with petroleum gas. So after plastic and sulfur, we are done with the petroleum gas. And then we direct insert the sulfur into sulfuric acid where we can pull the iron for the sulfuric acid. And then we can be done with the water at this point. Um, as we've seen with other bills, now we have to figure out how to snake the uh, sulfuric acid up uh, further up into the build. So uh, then in the meantime, here's our full belts of iron and copper. And uh, I think what this means, if we go and take a look at our base plan here, uh, I am thinking that, you know, we're going to get eight lanes of ironish stuff in over here. M maybe we can use more uh, over here uh, as well. And then uh, we can, so I think we are gonna end up using maybe four builds of this because the other, the rest of the iron will have to go into the mall probably. And uh, because in particular, the, the mall is very iron hungry, the stuff that you build on the mall. And then uh, we'll have to share the copper here. So that's probably four belts uh, we'll have eight belts of copper here. It's probably four for the mall, four for the modules. So we'll probably end up, I imagine what we'll end up doing is we'll have two of these builds for speed modules and two of these builds for productivity modules. Um, because I think we'll need them in approximately similar proportions uh, in general. So like if we take a look, what's probably one that's good to look at. If we take a look at space science and we look at the fully tiered three, well, okay, so we're using twice as many speed modules as productivity modules, but also bear in mind that those beacons are gonna get shared. So it's really uh, probably a better way to think about it is that for most of them, uh, we are reusing the beacons, and so it's actually closer to a one-to-one -one ratio, actually. So uh, so that is good to know. So we will probably end up with two productivity, two speed um, as we build stuff. Okay, so back to uh, working on things. So we, we have the iron on the outside, primarily just because we need the iron 
uh, almost immediately for the sulfuric acid. Um, I suppose it's worth noting that <clears throat> until we get to uh, the tier two and tier three modules, we don't actually need the sulfuric acid yet. So I think some of our earlier versions of this will not include will not include these machines because we won't have to build them at first. But uh, anyway, we uh, we now we get into the green circuits. Uh, we need three green circuit assemblers, and uh, I went and checked, and so I actually did the traditional factory planner here, so I could separate out the copper cables for the uh, the green circuits and for the red circuits. Uh, so they, they have sort of separate builds here, and uh, and basically what we have here is that we see we need four copper cable assemblers for the green circuits. So uh, here is what we ended up doing. So uh, because we're doing a lot of direct insertion, uh, it meant that sometimes uh, I had to separate slide sort of the green circuit down, right? So direct, real direct insertion from here to here uh, would have put, you know, the green circuit, oh, let's see, I didn't want to do that. Uh, would have put the green circuit like here, even with this, right? But but now this one's beacon aligned, so that's no good. So I decided to slide it up one, and then uh, to use a belt like this. So we're uh, we're feeding uh, the copper cables in from the side, or sorry, the copper plates in from the side. Copper cables come out on this side and come around on the belt, where they can be grabbed by these stack inserters. So uh, that should help us keep up. Now, uh, sometimes the alignment works out, so we can actually direct insert uh, from here to here. Uh, we're pulling the, we, we basically switch copper to this other side here, so that we have copper and iron on opposite sides. Let's talk output here. So, uh, so this, this green circuit, the first green circuit assembler, outputs on this belt which runs into this underground and then bends up to, to go up this inside channel. We're going to end up with a full green, a full belt of green circuits. So we need to make sure we can populate both sides of the belt. So this is populating the left side of this belt. Uh, then, uh, then we similarly here, we're doing a belt trick to send the copper cables up here. We do a little bit of underground work just so we can, you know, jam some extra stuff in here. In particular, yeah, you know, this was part of like figuring out how to fish the sulfuric acid through here. Um, and then this one here uh, outputs on the belt, goes in under the underground, and then comes on the other side of the belt. So, so these two are producing on opposite sides of the belt. Um, so that's good because we want we want balanced production here in order to balance the belt out. Uh, let's see. And then this is the third and final green circuit assembler. So the iron is done at this point. So we actually just bend the, bend the belt in so that it doesn't interfere with anything else. We grab it here. And then uh, it's a little hard to see because this is in the way. So let me take this out. But, uh, but now we have, we have this, we have two output inserters. Um, and so they should generally alternate on outputs here. And so this one is putting on the outside of this belt, which runs into the bottom of this underground and then comes out here as the left side of this belt. This one here is parallel to the underground. So as we've seen before, that means it goes on the right side in the direction of travel, which will be the top of this underground. So these two inserters are putting the green circuits on opposite sides of this belt. So both sides of this belt end up getting populated. Uh, and then we end up combining them here with a splitter uh, to go forward. Uh, let's see. Right, we already shifted the plastic back to the inside here, back here. And then uh, we need to put green circuits together with it. Uh, in order to build the red circuits. Now, if we took a look at the red circuits, the red circuits need less than half of a belt of green circuits. And so uh, what that means is that we can, uh, we can just grab half of the belt here. This is essentially together, this is one belt of green, even though it looks like two, it's actually one belt of green circuits worth. Um, and so we're getting half of the belt, sending it over here. 
joins the plastic. Um, and then the rest of it goes further up because um, we're going to need it uh, further in the builds, particularly, well, we'll see where we use it. Uh, then we use a splitter trick to swap the copper and the copper belt with the plastic green circuit belt so that we can get ready for red circuits. Um, I did need uh, now separate copper assemblers to build the copper wires for the red circuits. And so that's this one's being fed here and it's putting them on this belt which curves around which then uh, fortunately means that uh, it puts it on the inside of this belt which means that uh, the belt is free for the output of the red circuits to go that direction. Oh, I need to put this uh, power pole back. Okay. Uh, now, one of the things that I did check was if we look at the amount of copper cables that have to go for red circuits, it's more than half a belt, right? Half a belt is 1350 items per minute. So, uh, so even though we need eight red circuit assemblers, uh, what I did was I broke it into two batches of two. So this copper cable is doing a half belt and it's powering these four red circuit assemblers. Um, and so the red circuits are pulling the plastic and the green circuits off from here. On this side, they're pulling the <clears throat> copper cables in and putting the red circuits out. Okay, uh, then uh, here's the rest of the copper cable um, that bends around and is done. And so this is the, sorry, this is the copper plates. And then the copper cable assembler um, is basically now outputting on this side. So uh, these, these actually, these are on opposite sides of this belt, but this belt just goes to top off the copper cables over here uh, as we go. Um, and then, uh, so that refills the copper cables. Then otherwise these are light, these are doing the normal thing of pulling the plastic and the green circuits in. Um, we are ending this, we're done with the plastic at this point. We're done with the plastic at this point. We still need green circuits, but if you remember, we, we split off the green circuits here. Um, and so we're done with the half belt that's feeding the red circuits. Um, and so this should, because the red circuits use less than a half belt, um, this should eventually back up and then the remainder will just go into the rest of the, the sort of green circuit belt here. Um, let's see, right, so then this one is done. So here's the remainder of the green circuits. Then we have the red circuits here. We're now done with copper cables. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the red circuits here with this underground and put them over here on the inside of this belt. Uh, then, you know, we've been snaking the, you know, we switched sides with sulfuric acid and figured out how to get it up here. And we're finally ready for the blue circuits. So, uh, so here's the sulfuric acid. We're powering these two with this and then looping up and around with this one. I ended up needing a little extra space in here just to, just to make it all kind of work out right. Um, these would end up beacon aligned if I shifted them down one. So you know what? I'm not too worried about one, one little gap in here. But uh, the blue circuits now, uh, they obviously they get the sulfuric acid in here. They're pulling the red, bel red belts in off of this belt, uh, which only has red belts on it at this point, we can see here. Uh, we're outputting the blue circuits onto the other side of that same belt. And then here's the remainder of our green circuits, uh, which are coming in here. And so these come up here. Um, by the time we get up to this point, we're down to less than a half of a green circuit belt. So in particular, um, in particular, we're only using, let's see, uh, the last one, the last one, we're only using 2.2 blue circuits. So here, if we look at 1491 and we divide by uh, 2.2 and then we multiply by uh, 0 0.2 um, the last blue circuit assembler is only using this many green circuits and then the only other thing that uses green circuits are the tier 1 modules uh, which is 348 so we're down to less than a half of a belt of green circuits by this point and uh, and so what we do is we then put the green circuits on to the inside of the belt exclusively um, there's still plenty for this, uh, this guy to grab it. And then, um, wow, have I, 
Why did this all stop? This is a good question. Why did this stop? Why have you stopped? You don't have any... Why have you stopped? Oh, there's no... How did copper cables get in here? How did copper cables get in there? There's no way copper cables should get blocked here. This is uh, this is a little randomness right there. I'm not sure where those came from. Uh, I must have messed with it in some of my various uh, workings, but that explains why everything was backed up. Uh, and then we're finally ready for modules. And so uh, we still have a copper cable on this guy. Uh, so then uh, basically we've got the red and blue circuits. Um, those are the main input circuits for the tier two and tier three modules. Um, but for the tier one modules, we can grab the green circuits off of this side, output the tier one modules on the outside. We can grab the red circuits over here. Uh, we have a stack filter inserter here. It, it probably doesn't need to be a stack filter inserter. Uh, probably a regular inserter will be fine. Uh, so, but I don't know that we're using filter and oh, I guess we do use filter inserters at points where we downgrade things. So, all right, so let's, let's turn this into a, uh, that's not right. This one. Okay. You're grabbing just the modules and sticking them in here. Uh, then the inserter is putting them back onto this belt so they can be grabbed for the inputs to the. Uh, tier two modules, um, because this inserter is working parallel to the belt, uh, it is putting it on the right side of the belt, which is exactly where we want it to be, so that the outputs can go on the other side. Um, we also have a stack filter inserter to grab the tier two modules as the outputs, uh, which can be used as inputs to the tier threes, and then the tier threes come out here. And that's modules. Now, you know, part of the idea here is we can we can downgrade this stuff, right? So, um, if we are only building tier one modules, then basically we don't have anything beyond here, and all of the tier one modules can actually just show up into this passive provider chest. Um, and in fact, actually, I think what I want to do is I want to change. I want to change these. Uh, in the following fashion, which is I want to put a filter on this and I want to put a filter on this and a filter on this. Uh, so that way if construction bots end up uh, recycling any of these, they will bring them back to the appropriate box. Um, I think once we're once we're making these, we generally want to be going full steam ahead. We'll, we'll think about whether we want to put uh, limits on these later, but I think for right now, we want to build as many of the, whatever the top tier modules we're building at the time, we want to build as many of those as possible. So um, that, is, that is modules. The only other thing that I think we need to say is to look at how big this is. And... And we can see that it is bigger than it is bigger than one grid cell. So we are going to have to break this up and span two grid cells. But fortunately, we have an empty grid cell here. So I think this is going to end up looking like that. Um, and so we'll bring the we'll bring the OR inputs in on this side and build this way towards the modules. Um, and they don't have to go anywhere after that, right? Like the the modules are just really. Um, they're really just showing up here and ending up in the boxes to be made available to the construction bots. So that is that is upgradable. That is upgradable modules. So those are exciting. Um, as always, we will produce the uh, downgraded versions of these, um, including. <clears throat> I think we'll have to. It'll be interesting. I think what we will end up doing is we'll go all the way down to blue belts, but still building tier three modules. I think we can do that. Um, but then we'll further downgrade, so we're only building tier two modules, and then we're only building tier one modules. And uh, obviously when we get down to tier one modules, we can pull out the blue circuits, we can pull out um, the uh, sulfuric acid, um, but you know, we can leave the rest of it in there. Um, and so you know, this should be relatively cheaper to build at first, but we can just sort of plunk it in and then, you know, that's the way the upgrades work, right? Like we can just upgrade right over top of it. So uh, that is going to be it. So I'm going to do some work off uh, camera and produce these blueprints. 
Um, but this is, uh, this is one that I knew we had to do, and I was a little curious. Um, I, I had confidence we could figure this out, given the, you know, we figured out how to get space science working. And so these were, it was a little tricky, I will say. Like with the full belts um, instead of half belts, there was a little more, it was just a little harder to weave everything through here. But uh, fortunately, there's not really too many ingredients, right? The entire factory plan is just not very involved. So... Uh, we were able to figure it out. Uh, we are humming away up here. Uh, this, even with, you know, even with fully beaconized stuff, this assembler really only runs about half half the time, uh, which you can see. Um, and so, uh, so this is really even at tier three stuff, right? This is only producing, you know, three and a half tier three, you know, modules per minute. And if we have two of them. Right, um, even just to do the upgrade that we need for the space science tier three, right? That's 200 tier three speed modules. That is, that is going to be, um, uh, you know, 200 divided by seven. So I don't know what is that. That's like 30 minutes, I think, just to build the uh, the modules we need to um, to do a tier three upgrade for. Uh, for for a single space science column, so um, so we're gonna have to see how this works. Um, we may find that you know we're tired of waiting on this stuff, and we may need to set up maybe an extension base just to build more modules. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. We do have all the pieces for doing that, so uh, we can do that if we wish. But uh, in the meantime, that's all we've got for today. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, bye.